G'day, Bernie Gannett, and today we're going to talk about what happened with City Point Christian College and the Religious Discrimination Bill. <laughs> Welcome to the great battle of the losers, because that is really how the battle between the gay activists and the Christian lobbyists over City Point Christian College and the Religious Discrimination Bill should be described. What happened was so illogical, so bizarre, that it's almost impossible to comprehend. But basically, it's as if both sides decided, instead of fighting the other, that they just turn their weapons on themselves and blast away. It's about the only way you can understand what happened. But I'll try and talk you through it. So let's Start at the start. There are two sides, the red team and the blue team. Got it? I hope so, because this is not the complicated part. The red team has battalions of garishly dressed drag queens, weirdos, the media, and weirdos in the media, some trans woman who thinks she's a priest, Labor, the Greens, of course, woke bosses and a phalanx of stony-faced feminist lawyers, an increasingly large number of revolutionary liberals who act like a fifth column against humanity, and a bunch of anti-Christian activists with a penchant for arson. You get the picture. You'll also come to see that the red team has the blue team's head honchos going for it, but we'll get into that later. Whoops, wrong room. The red team are the baddies, armed with rainbows, and they want to eradicate Christianity and instead impose a vast network of thought police, whose job is to scrutinize your every thought and syllable for heresy against the new woke religion. That's it, that's what they've been fighting for all along. On the other hand, the blue team consists of persecuted Christian schools. Its primary fighting force is an unorganized rabble of mums and dads who can't believe the gender wars are even actually a thing, and who unfortunately take advice from people like Martin Niles to solve their problems. There's the odd bishop or two, a Christian lobbyist here or there, a few weak-kneed conservative politicians, and all of the about three remaining conservative legislators still in Australia's state and Commonwealth parliaments. Oh, why'd you put Martin on our side? He wants to give the Thought Police more power. Oh, look, don't you start. This is gonna get complicated enough as it is. Just go with it. So there you have it. One war, two sides, and best part of all, we're the good guys. Yeah! It's all pretty simple, until we get to the Battle of City Point Christian College. <laughs> to understand why everyone lost their minds at City Point Christian College, you have to understand what led to that debacle. Remember the statement the school put out? Yes, the one that caused all the protests. Well, let's call that a public policy on the alphabet people. The religious discrimination bill, if it had passed, would require every Christian school in Australia to issue a publicly available policy on all the alphabet people. Let's call this public statements the tell the world exactly how you wanna be an evil bigot by hating on rainbow statement, or just the statement of bigotry for short. We'll call it that because that is exactly how it will be viewed in the Temple of Thought Police. The Religious Discrimination Bill was not designed to make their lives harder. It was there to make them easier, and the Statement of Bigotry does just that. The Statement of Bigotry would require every Christian school in Australia to out themselves to anti-Christian activists armed with the coercive power of state and your money and links to every anti-Christian group in the nation. Knock, knock, knock. Can it be any more obvious? The statement of bigotry creates a Christian school kill list. That's what it does. If the religious discrimination bill ever becomes law, the thought police won't have to worry about tedious detective work. They'll simply have to gaze out from their tower in Mordor and look for the burning school with drag queens picketing the front gate. That's much more fun. Then the thought police can move in at their leisure, haul the principal from the ashes, charge him with crimes against humanity, and give the Orkin address brandishing a box of matches a human rights award. <laughs> As an added bonus, this generally sends a pretty strong message to other Christian schools that they better not act so Christian next time. And given the generally pretty timid nature of Christians these days, 
That's the message that generally works. Don't believe me? Have a look at City Point Christian College. Have a close look. The school was vandalized. Students received death threats. The school had to take its logo off its buses for people's safety. All sorts of investigations were launched. The Queensland Human Rights Commission started drumming up complaints against school. The principal's career, well, that's over. The school almost lost its funding. It could have been shut down. And all of this occurred, mind you, in a state which has already legislated to protect religious freedom. Hmm. Now there's a pretty big hint about how well these laws actually work. And the Christian response? Well, all those other principals who might have sympathized with City Point, they remain silent. Christians don't fight together, we prefer to die alone. The blue team told the world at City Point, don't you mess with Christian schools or we'll back down as soon as you make us let you know where we are. So yeah, I guess giving the Religious Discrimination Bill a test drive at City Point worked out real well for the blue team. And given this, the logical person might think that the blue team was against the Religious Discrimination Bill during the Battle of City Point and that the red team was for it. But you would be wrong. At this point, all logic disappears. Brace yourselves. In this skirmish, the red team, the baddies, went to war with itself. The thought police in every jurisdiction condemned City Point and demanded that it woke itself up or be shut down. And then everyone else in the red team agreed that the thought police should definitely not be given any more power. I can't explain it. Maybe what happened at City Point was just too easy. The red team probably wants more sport from Christian schools next time around. The red team was so adamant that the Australian Human Rights Commission should not be able to stroll around the grounds of City Point Christian College imposing woke rainbow rights at the behest of perpetually miserable activists that those same perpetually miserable activists stood guard at the front gate of the school to protest against that happening. It truly was a sight to behold. The red team attacked its own long-held position because its most militant crazies would rather give up the opportunity to control Christian schools now in order to gain the power to raise them from the ground tomorrow. It's proof that you can oppose a bad idea for all the wrong reasons. Meanwhile, the blue team, that's us, also went to war with itself. Its advance guard at City Point voluntarily submitted to requirements that were only proposals and issued the public statement of bigotry. The school was then predictably condemned to death and the gallows were rolled out. But instead of riding to its rescue, the rest of the blue team insisted that the Thought Police protect the school during its voluntary death spiral. It did so as far as I can tell because Christian activists are just dumb and addicted to losing. They desperately fought to surrender to the red team's moderates who marched in the Mardi Gras in order to stave off the red team's militant crazies who, well, also march in the Mardi Gras. It's proof that good does not always follow from the best of intentions. So far, losing has been the only winner and that's not about to change. If you're not confused at this point, you should be because nothing makes sense. As I said, it's as if both armies looking out across the trenches said, stuff it, let's just shoot ourselves. But I am proud to report that the blue team was far, far more effective at doing itself in. When it comes to losing, no one can do it as effectively or with as much style as the modern Christian. The blue team kicked off the skirmish of City Point with a rather novel approach to combat. It flung all its reinforcements at failure and then capitulated, hoping that this would shock the red team into giving up more. Predictably, this did not work and the situation deteriorated from there, but it was not initially as complete a disaster as you might think either. The red team was so confused by the blue team's initial surprise surrender attack that it began lobbing grenades at its own reinforcements. The Thought Police, everyone did their best to fail, but the blue team just did it better. Three days into the fight that he kicked off by accepting defeat in advance, the principal of City Point Christian College ritually humiliated himself in public and then stood aside. The principal of a Brisbane Christian school will stand aside after issuing a controversial enrolment contract asking students and parents to agree to gender roles. The move generated public outrage earlier this week. City Point Christian College Principal Brian Mulheron says he will reflect on what has transpired. In a statement, he said, I'm sorry that some students felt that they may be discriminated against at City Point. I feel it's right to stand aside and take extended leave. 
in order to reflect on what has transpired and provide the college community time to heal. The current head of primary will step into the role as acting principal. Yes, Brian Mulheron loses his way out of this losing battle so decisively that the blue team was almost entirely conquered by an army shooting the other way. The red team, helpless in the face of this absolute train wreck to take any action that could possibly keep the blue team in the fight, watched on helplessly as the battle petered out. Now let's dial up the bizarro meter. After all the destruction at City Point, both sides then upped the ante and doubled down on the whole shoot it yourself concept. The blue team, seeing the destruction at City Point, decided that this was still something every other Christian school in Australia should go through. Only when Christian schools are under the control of the Human Rights Commission, the blue team's generals cried, will Christian schools be properly protected? The red team, on the other hand, brought out the big guns. Ian Thorpe was wheeled into Canberra and made what was probably the most ironic statement of the whole shebang. And in good faith, a god of the pool today gave his reading on the religious freedom bill. We want to see it disappear. Ian Thorpe campaigning in Canberra against laws that prevent people being discriminated against because of their religious beliefs. It becomes state-sanctioned discrimination. State-based discrimination? Now on that point, Thorpe and I are in complete agreement. A religious discrimination bill would allow the government to shut down the few remaining Christian schools in this nation. Thorpe's mistake, however, was to think that the government was on the Christian side. I'll pause here while you laugh uncontrollably for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Thorpe, he may be a great swimmer, but he'll never go down in history as a great mind. A new anti-discrimination law to empower anti-Christian bureaucrats to receive complaints from anti-Christian activists against Christians in schools, in the workplace, across society, and Thorpey thinks that law will protect Christians? Come on. Fortunately for Thorpey, his fears are groundless. Kill the bill anyway, he demanded. And then came the pivotal juncture on the battle. The red team met the blue team on the floor of parliament and all hell broke loose. The Labor caucus has held a meeting this morning to settle their position. Now officially, they're saying they'll pass the bill through the House of Representatives. The Morrison government is one step closer to passing its religious discrimination bill after Labor offered conditional support. I always supported, Labor always supported um, strengthening the protections for um, people of faith. Yes. In a contest bereft of logic to that point, the red team suddenly, unfairly and very, very cunningly gave up fighting against the religious discrimination bill. It was a double, double lose move, kind of like a bluff, a reversal of a reversal or multiplying negatives. You get the picture. And in a rare moment of clarity, the red team realised it had the numbers to win this war the way it always wanted all along out loud and proud. And noting that the blue team had done a pretty good job promoting the Thought Police, but that its proposed laws still contain some rookie errors, the red team used its weight of numbers on the floor of parliament to polish them up. Riles, we've seen Stephen Jones' personal plea uh, and his sons. Uh, how important are these amendments? Well, they're very important to people like Paddy Coulter Jones because they allow him to be himself, just like everybody else, with the same protections. But uh, they're so divisive, according to the government, that it's got the government now voting against its own bill. This went through the parliament all night last night, through the House of Representatives, and we saw government members crossing the floor like migrating ants, voting against amendments, voting for amendments, voting against the bill, voting for the bill. And in the end, the bill got passed on the Labor vote and the crossbench and the votes of several government members who cross the floor. Ah yes, no point having stock standard bad laws when it comes to the Thought Police. You might as well make them blatantly evil. And so the red team, much to the horror of the blue team, which was now allied with its enemy and winning its way to utter defeat, amended the Religious Discrimination Bill to end Christian schooling in Australia in about mm, 24 hours. And then whoosh, the whole thing sailed through Parliament. It was just like peace in our times and we all know how that ended. As the sun rose and the smoke cleared, the blue team looked out across the carnage and then realised it was standing on its dick. The only thing that now stood between Christian schools and the Thought Police was the Senate, and it was controlled by the baddies. But there, for some unknown reason, 
they voted to stop winning again. Yes, the red team was back at war with the religious discrimination bill. Those in favour of the motion say aye. Against say no. Aye. The noes have it. The noes have it. Thus ended the first battle of the religious discrimination bill. As the dust cleared, the lone movement on the battlefield came from Martin Isles desperately calling for donations and trying to G up both sides to fight this battle all over again. So I'm asking you for help. I'm saying help us build our war chest, um, you know, donate to ACL, uh, give us that strength uh, that we need over the next couple of months because an election is coming and we just need to make sure that this sort of rubbish ends. So thank you everybody, that's my update. And let me just leave you with this thought. On balance, I think what happened today is good. It has clarified what the problems are uh, and at the same time, it has saved us from a real disaster in relation to Christian schooling in this country. <laughs> Christians, <laughs> on balance, today was a good day. What are you smoking? Christian schooling was almost eradicated and he calls that a success. And on the very same day that occurred, the Australian Christian Lobby put out a campaign calling for donations, seeking to fight for new religious discrimination laws all over again. It's madness. My strong advice, ignore Martin and any other Christian group trying to repeat this madness. Keep your change. It will be the best investment you ever make in the fight for freedom. It should be clear now to anyone with more than two brain cells that this entire battle was fought by both sides based purely on the title of the Religious Discrimination Bill and without any understanding whatsoever of what was contained inside it. The only reason Christian schools have been given a reprieve is because at a key moment, the gay activists proved even more strategically stupid than the Christian ones. Alas, this brief moment of losing less than the enemy has already evaporated. Savor that fleeting feeling of success because you probably won't experience it again, ever. Already, Christian activists are stirring themselves to fight the religious discrimination war all over again. Apparently, they reason, if they only lose harder next time around, victory will be assured. This is a situation Australia faces as an election looms and the second battle of the religious discrimination bill is just around the corner. Good luck, Christian Australia. You're going to need it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like it and share it. Help get the word out and be sure to leave a comment. I'd love to hear what you think. You can also check out my Facebook page and I'm also on Twitter at Bernard Gaynor. Uh, and finally, you can start today with all my latest news at my website, bernardgaynor.com.au. Make sure you sign up to my newsletter and if you can, please donate. I cannot do this without you and I still have legal fees coming through. Your support makes a massive difference. Thank you very much.